Mm. Parched. Mm. <laughs> okay, what we're going to talk about today is the core. You want to have a strong, ripped core. It's what everybody's after. If you're looking to get a ripped six pack, abs, that kind of thing, you, what you need to focus on is your body fat percentage and getting into a calorie deficit so you can lose weight to get lean so the abs are revealed. That's the topic for another video. I'm not going to talk about that here. What we're going to talk about right now is the strength and structure and function of your core and how you can improve that so that you can move better. Okay, and I'm going to zero in on a very popular exercise, the plank. You know, a lot of you are probably familiar with doing the plank. You've probably done some planks in your past, gym class, growing up, whatever, getting the plank, strengthen up that core. Here's the problem. A lot of times, the plank is done incorrectly. So if you have a postural imbalance and certain muscles around your hips and your spine are tighter than uh, the opposing muscle groups, when you get down to the plank, you're gonna aggravate those imbalances. And I'm gonna start with a posture that, that's most common that I've seen. So here's what it looks like. And you have that excessive arch through the lower back and you have that excessive round through the upper back and a lot of times a cranking of the neck. And you see the butt sticking out as well. Excessive arch, lower back, rounding of the upper back. Next, cranked up. Okay, that's a very, very common positioning for the plank. Now, what you should do is take a picture or take a video of yourself doing a plank. It's really easy. Everybody's got uh, cameras and uh, uh, you can record on your phone and stuff. Just get somebody to do it for you or set up your phone. Take the time to do it and assess. If you have that, any of these kind of dysfunctional postures in the plank, then you need to watch this video and use some of the cues I'm about to give you. So, number one, let's start with the lower back. So what we have here is an excessive arch through the lower back and the butt is sticking up in the air. So the cue I'm going to get you to use to get rid of that is to hide your butt. Now, how are you going to do that properly? First, do the opposite. Stick your butt out. Stick your butt way up into the air. You're going to arch your back. To do the opposite, hide your butt, tuck your butt underneath. That butt's going to, and the back's going to go from being extremely, what am I doing here? Extremely arched. I don't know what I'm doing. Extremely arched to just a slight arch. Okay. You just want a very, very slight arch through the lower back. So and when you do that, you're going to feel that core activate to pull those hips underneath. You might even feel your glutes squeezing a little bit. Just be aware of those things. Two is tuck your hips underneath. There you go. Good stuff. So show me tucking your hips. Stick your butt out. There you go. That's an arch. Tuck your hips underneath. That's engaging the core and leveling the sides. So okay, have a little arch there, but uh, we don't want to have too much of one. We want to make sure we're engaging. Okay, so that's going to get you out of a position where your hip flexors and your lower back are holding you in position to where your core is actually working. You're not gonna be able to hold that plank nearly as long as soon as you get, as soon as I get somebody to do that, bam, their core is working and they, bam, bam, baby. Their core is working and they cannot hold the plank for nearly as long because the strong hip flexors and lower back aren't doing all the work. Okay, now we need to move up, up, the, up the line here to the upper back. What typically happens once you get rid of that um, dysfunctional or uh, improper position in the lower back is a lot of that dysfunction travels up the chain to the lower back and down the chain through the legs. So the two things to look out for are a lot of times, first with the legs, the knees bend. The knees will bend once you activate that cue and you don't want that. So you check your knees to make sure they're locked, squeeze your quads to make sure they're locked up, okay? Not as, as common, but just check yourself real quick to make sure that's not what happened. The more common one is the dysfunction travels up the chain and the upper back rounds excessively, even more than it may have been rounded before because we got rid of that slack in the lower back. So what the cue that I will give you to get rid of that is think about turning your chest up. So again, we're going to do the opposite to make sense. So the opposite of that would be to round over, right? To flop over and have a round, a hunch in your back, your chest drops down. I'm going to turn my chest up or extend, get rid of the round through my upper back. Okay. That's the cue you want to use. Not so much making your chest big and retracting your shoulder blades. It's getting that thoracic extension, that extension of your upper back, so turn that chest up while keeping the cues with the lower, while keeping that butt tucked underneath, chest turned up, it's gonna feel awkward as hell, trust me, because you're not, your body's not used to being in that position, it's not gonna be strong in that position. Position, it's gonna be very difficult. You can squeeze your glutes, think about tucking the hips underneath and squeezing this hard there, that's pretty good position. There you go, uh -huh. and the core is working like a ma, eh? Yes. You can see he's shaking. Whereas if you let that go and went to your normal position, let it go and go to where you that you you're comfortable there. Right? Yeah, it's cheating. You can hang you can hang out there all day. Yeah. It's not even working as core. Okay, so that's difficult to do, but that's the right way to do the plank so that you don't perpetuate your muscle imbalances and continue to strengthen the strong dominant muscles and work on strengthening up the weak 
um, dormant muscles. Okay, and the last thing to look out for is your neck. So what happens at the neck? Make sure that you keep that chin tucked and you're in a nice neutral position and you're not arching your uh, back of your neck. You're not craning your neck like that, okay? So there you go. That's the proper way to cue yourself to do a plank so that you can strengthen up that core and it's an awesome, awesome exercise to do to number one, reveal if you've got postural dysfunctions because you're gonna know, you get to that plank and if you're not cueing yourself a certain way, you're gonna go into wherever you're the strongest and you, if you have that kind of dysfunctional uh, track through your spine, then you know that you need to cue yourself properly to do it right. Um, and then, I don't, where am I going? I don't know, I just get on tangents all the time. It's like saying that it's a great test to show if you have dysfunctional posture and then it's a great exercise to do to correct your posture when done correctly. At the very least, if you're planking all the time, and you're doing it wrong, here's the proper way to do it, to get that core to do what it's supposed to do. I hope this helps you to start building up some strong core functional strength. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bam, baby, bam, baby, bam, baby.